This conference uh, will now be recorded. And as you know, we're going to be recording this conference. We um, hope to have this on the uh, Health Department website. We do know that um, in the different offices, one individual may do the budget form and another person may do the actual uh, grant application. If your budget or finance individual is not on this call, they can always refer back to the, uh, the, the recorded webinar. So I wanted to let you know that. Now, um, before we get started, you know, we can always have these great well-planned out, well planned out plans and things go wrong. Yesterday, we did a walkthrough of the form with the OAIV staff and discovered a couple of things. One is the form that is on the website for some reason didn't pick up um, a, a couple of the functions and um, some formatting. So we, we want to get that fixed. And when we go through the demonstration, I will point out where those problem areas are. One is the calculation of mileage and then one is the format towards the end of the form. The other thing that we realized is that there was probably, probably some more instructional information that is needed but it's not included in the, the uh, instruction page. So I'll try to go over those as we move through this. As we move through it, I'm gonna um, try not to do it too fast. If I get to going too fast, um, let us know. Now, as far as questions, this is probably one of the most um, presentations that's gonna have probably more interaction because of questions. We do have the webinar scheduled for two hours. Hopefully it won't take us that long, but we did it in case there were a lot of questions. I think the way that we'll handle questions is if you have a question, type it in the chat box and Jan will let me know that there's a question out there. Uh, depending on the question, I might be able to answer it right there for everyone. Is it, If it's very agency specific, we'll have to hold those and address those with you later. Another thing on questions, we'll do like we've done in the past. At the end of the session, we'll give everybody a chance to sign off unless you want to stay on for a few more minutes for, uh, for some additional questions. Okay, with that being said, we're going to jump right in. Let me close down some stuff here. Okay. Okay, so when you go to the form, the first section you're going to see are the instructions. <clears throat> then you're going to see the, the actual budget form, the budget summary. And a note about the budget summary is you all as users don't have to do anything to this form. It will actually populate all the needed information. There's the link to the match calculator some information on, um, actually it's in-kind match on everything, not just volunteers. There's an indirect cost calculator for those individuals that will, will be using the 10% uh, Dominius rate. Here's information on that. And we've also attached a couple of sample budgets and information uh, there for you. Okay. So, the budget instructions is quite lengthy, but we did that to help address all of the different sales and information needed and also ways to enter the information. This budget form um, was developed to allow the user a lot of flexibility and so you can enter. I think the best way to kind of demonstrate this is to go through and just enter some um, dummy data so you can see what's going on. Um, you do have to, well, I don't see the slide bar, but you do have to, um, as you see, kind of cursor over to get to the information. Uh, I love it. 
Okay, so this is where you put your organization name. Again, I'm just going to enter stuff. Um, there's your agency name. The fund source is a drop down list. So let's just put VOCA. Your project title, if you have one, and then the period begin and end date. And of course, for this, this grant, it's going to be July 1, 2020 to June 30, 2021. Okay, so personnel. It starts off, most all of these start off with just one uh, row, but you can add, and each section will have like either you add it or you delete it. To delete, you have to actually be on the cell that you want to, I mean, the row that you want to delete. So let's just add somebody. Again, I'm just kind of making, um, making up some information. I'm not going to put last name, but of course you will. And let's put this position as social worker. Now, this particular cell wants to know either the annual salary or the hourly rate. So let's say that This person's out salary is thirty thousand. Then we do have to indicate which we're using, hourly or salary, and then the numbers of work. This system does not distinguish between full time, part time, or exempt and non exempt. But we do have to put in the number of hours, and typically a full time person's going to work two thousand eighty hours. Percent of time. This is the percent of time that the individual is in the grant. So I'm going to put 50%. This gives you your total project budget. Now, these functions all along here, pretty much they act the same for each budget category. There are a differences when it comes to how you calculate it, but for the most part, all of this is going to work the same. Now, another thing that's different for uh, is the match and that is you are not required to match each line item with the required match amount so for example for VOCA you're not required to go down and put 2080 all the way down the flexibility is going to allow you to use whatever match from that particular category dollar amount that you want to use so let's say for this example, we're not going to do the 20%. We're just going to show that we've got 2000 in cash match for this one. Okay. Then if you have an in kind, I'm going to, I'm going to demonstrate that in just a minute. Then we have the total match. It subtracts it from the total project cost. And here's on this column is the amount that's going to be in the grant. Now I want to go back and I want to add someone else. So I'm going to add whoop um I'm going to try not to Okay, so for this particular example, I'm going to show you hourly rate. So this person's hourly rate is $10. I have to indicate that it's hourly and indicate how many hours they work. And this particular worker doesn't, isn't full time, they're only part time. So I'm going to put in a thousand hours. And this person is in the grant at 100%. There's the project cost. This particular person or expense isn't going to have any cash or in time match. And so the total. Now, when, another thing on that, when you are not, if, you, if your office chooses to do this, if you're not matching each line item, what you have to make sure is at the end and the completion of your budget is that you have indicated the correct budget amount and it will show up. And I'm just going to flip over here real quick and I'll 
I'll come back come back to this. So, so this is what I've entered so far. And down here is going to show is the grant and what percentage is the match. So at the end of the grant, the, the, once you finish entering everything, this amount right here has to be whatever that grant requires. You know, there's differences, 20, 25, some there's not any, okay? Looking back over here. Now, for in-kind match, and this is something that's not really addressed in the, in the um, instructions, but let's say you have volunteer hours that you're going to use for in-kind match. Volunteer hours are going to need to go here. Any other piece to go in the appropriate budget line item? And I'll demonstrate that as we go along too. So since you don't, uh, most people have several volunteers and we don't want to list all of their names, we just want to list volunteers. And then the position, we're going to list volunteers again. And volunteers, you know, their their um, their value is in is in um, what they do hourly. So I'm not sure what the current hourly rate is right now, but I'm just going to use um, a ten dollars an hour, and then I have to indicate hourly. And then here you're going to put the aggregate number of all the volunteer hours that you are proposing. Or planning to hope that your agency uses. So let's say you have lots of volunteers, you've got a 24 hour service, and those those volunteer hours are going to be big. So let's say something like 8,000 hours. And they're going to be in this grant at 100%. And what you have to do is going to show up in your total project. Let me just lower that number so it's not so big um what you're going to do is put the in your in-kind match here that total 100 percent now look at this so, so now you've got six thousand dollars towards the project total that six thousand is in kind and then it will subtract it from this column which is your actual total federal funds let's just Look back over here and see that change because the system is going to add both your cash and in kind match. Okay. I'm going to show you something else because this is where some people may make a mistake. You may put in here that the their, this person's annual rate is 30000 but you made a mistake and you clicked hourly. And boy, I wish I had that job. So you can see what's happening there. Um, so you have to make sure that you, you enter that correctly. Another kind of mistake that can happen here, you see that this caseworker, we know that she's paid 10,000. Sometimes folks will put that 10,000, 40 here, and then come up with a crazy number. So here you need to make sure if they're hourly that you put in the hourly hourly rate. This form also has built in the narrative um, information. It's all right here on one form. You, you um, previously have been doing it in two different forms, but now we have it here. There is a challenge because you see this, the sale, this is all the information you can enter as much information as you want, but unfortunately, you are only going to be able to see the information that's in this cell. So if you're trying to put all of this information right here in this cell, you won't be able to see it. So what you have to do is add an additional narrative and add an additional narrative again. For, for personnel, we are suggesting or suggesting that you know narrative space for each each um each employee. So here we would put information about Mary. I'm just showing that as an example, Sally, and then and of course you'll have to also explain about your volunteers. Okay. 
for, for French benefit, because of uh, this form, and by the way, this is Excel form, so it's got a lot of hidden calculations and, and things like that. But, um, so, um, uh, it's, it's uh, a complicated form, but it's done, it's done that way to help ease you as you go through the system. Uh, another thing about the form, unlike the GAMS application, this is not a, a linear form. This form will not, this form's not, not going to necessarily um, complete your complete your budget. I don't know if I'm using the right word. In other words, before you get started, you're really going to already have an idea of what you're going to ask for and how much and, and what percentage. The other thing you're going to do is make sure that you've looked at if the grant requires it, the required match. You're going to you're going to have to kind of know that because you you need to know here where you're going to put it. So you may be um, working on another kind of outline budget for yourself before you can plug it everything in here. Um, if you choose to work with everything within this budget, you can do it, but you'll be bouncing around a little bit. I don't know if that makes sense. I guess if you get into working with this, you will. So for, um, so for the form, we've had to separate out payroll taxes and fringe benefits. Now with payroll taxes, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask. So what OAIV wants want want the users to do is up here how you've got these people in this particular order. They're gonna want you to do that under the fringe and um, taxes. Good thing is you can come up here and copy and paste that into here so you know you've got your order correct. When you come down here to unemployment, you can, um, something taxes, you, you can, this is where we put either the FICA or the unemployment. So you, you have your FICA here. You have, you have your standard cost base. This is going to be Ah, okay. Um, you see how it rounded it off? This is something that we had corrected and now it's come back again. Let me make a note about this. Sorry. Now, then, wait a minute. I think I put that in the wrong column. This is where you put your rate. Well, so that that's not rounded at all. So the cost base is. I am so sorry. I have just drawn a blank. So that's okay. We're going to. Go to instruction. Okay. So your cost dollar amount you're going to apply the rate to. Now there's a couple of ways to do this. And I hope this doesn't confuse folks, but your cost rate, your cost base can be, and I'm going to flip it back to the top. You can do either one or two things when you You can use this rate and then the percentage of time at 50%. Or you can come up here and use this rate at 100%. I hope I didn't, didn't lose y'all. And let's say that let's say that um, oh, let me show you this. You can do this if you don't know it off the top of your head. I don't know how much y'all know about 
Excel, but you can do an equal and then go up here and grab it and put it in. The percent of time for this employee was, see now I have to go back and forth, um, this 50%. For the demonstration purposes, I'm not gonna show any in kind. Um, and as you know, then it shows up under here. So there's your federal, federal rate. Or say, whatever um, it, that is. There is something else unique about this, and it really works for unemployment taxes. If everybody on your office is paid at the same tax rate, then what you can do is you can just put um, FICA here. Well, on the description, you might want to put maybe something like staff FICA. The type, you need to put this in there because it bases on the rate. And what's your cost base? Well, your cost base is going to be your total amount. Now, here's where it's convenient to use the actual total dollar for you. This is 23400 So I'm going to go down here and plug that in. And the rate is the same for everybody. And I'm going to put 100%. And the reason I'm putting 100% is because this figure right here has already been calculated at the percentage it's going to be in the grant. So if you put anything else other than 100% when you're using the cost base, based on the federal dollars to be awarded, you're going to shortchange yourself. So there is your um, amount that's going to be requested in the grant. Now, if you have, and this happens sometimes, if you, you have employees that have a different cost rate of FICA based on the fact of um, tax deferred benefit, then you will need to list List your staff individually so that it calculates correctly for you. Now, I'm going to add another text, and I'm, this is going to be Mary. And she is going to, uh, this is unemployment. So the un unemployment taxes, the way you enter it can work the same way as FICA. In other words, you can lump all your staff together like a show here, or you list them individually. Now, when you list them individually, if your cost base, whichever one you use, is less than $14,000, then you don't have to enter any unemployment. I'm thinking I'm uh, most of y'all, if you're the finance people, you understand this. Anything over 14000 has to be taxed for unemployment. So in this case, Mary, we're only going to show 1000 Now, uh, those who work with unemployment, you know that it's a very, very small, small percentage. So it's like 0.004% of their salary. And the percent of time in this situation will be 50% because I'm basing it on this cost rate. Look at that, it's so small, 20 cents. Now before I, uh, oh, if you, um, if you have to list a different tax rate for employees, you need to explain that in the, in the payroll narrative. And, and the, the narrative, you don't have to repeat that this person's FICA is based on 15,000 times this amount and 50% because we have that up there. What we're looking at is narrative to explain and justify um, what's going on. So if you had to enter someone's FICA rate that's different than the standard 7.65, you need to explain that there. Now, 
I'm going to just stop just a second to see if there's any questions so far. Do we have any questions? Okay. So I'm going to keep on going. Now, with the French benefit, I'm going to add a benefit. Sandra? Yep. We do have a question. Where where would the PERS retirement go? Okay, now that's not a tax. That's a benefit, correct? Isn't PERS a benefit? That's a, mm. Retirement is a benefit. I'll show you that. So, um, let's see. Okay, Sandra, I do have I do have some questions coming in. Okay. Okay, let me open up the chat box. Okay. And where does the match fit in? Well, if 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 you're doing um hold on just a minute, I've got to get this chat box opened. Okay. Um so The, uh, the the match is going to be, you know, pretty much whatever percentage you're using here. Or it may that it may be that you're not going to use fringe for match. But if you are, then you need to use the same you need to use that calculation based on this right here. So let's see that's two thousand. Let's just do a little example of that. Um, I don't know where it was. Which one was it? Sorry, y'all. That's Mary. And if y'all don't mind, I'm just going to delete this. So, well, I can't. Got to, um, it's protected. That's one thing. Once you add those, these particular cells, you can't delete those. Um, so that's Mary. It's 2000. So here, Well, I don't know what two thousand and up is that. Let's say two thousand dollars of her sal of of the the salary. Okay, that's that's how you base it on. So uh, that is um two hundred dollars. Was that clear? I don't know. So I guess just to summarize. Whatever match, I mean, whatever, yeah, whatever match you put in here has to be at the same rate that, that this is of your total cost project, right? Okay. Now, let's, are, are we ready to go to benefit? Any more questions, Jan? I'm going to leave that up to you to help me. Okay, wait, there are a few more. Um, okay. Can you lump the staff unemployment? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, then when, yeah. And, and then, then someone course, just. Go ahead. Someone just clarifying the cost base should be 100% of the total project cost, correct? Question mark. No. Your cost base for the benefits are either going to be based on the total project, which is going to be this percentage of time if you're doing it individually, or it's going to be based on this over here at a hundred percent hundred percent of the time. I'm on the I'm in the wrong. Um, let me go back up. Your cost rate is either going to be based on this, which is at this rate, or it's going to be based on this. And if you use these numbers here, or this number there, these are going to be at 100%. And the reason is, you've already you've already calculated your 50% 50, your 50 all the way out. That's why if you use, if you go with this method, it has to be 100%. 
So if you want to take a note, this is based on, uh, if you use this cost rate for your friend and FICA, it's based on these rates. If you use this as your cost base, it's based on 100%. Okay, you can delete previous input. What I was saying is what you can't delete is you see these sales I added, I can't delete these because the form's protected. We've got to have them put that function here. We've got to add, we can't delete. That's just in the narrative. You can, you can uh, change all of this. And just a, a matter um, for the form, Anything in blue, you can't change. Anything that's white is where you can enter data and change. Okay, Jan, any other questions? Oh, wait a minute, where does the match waiver fit in? Well, we're gonna get to that and that's going to be, and I should have said this earlier, um, the match waiver uh, um, is, um, we actually had to develop the this, this same form, but just for the VOCA grants that only only those VOCA grants that are asking for match waiver, and I will get into that. So I'm going to save that towards the end in case people want to leave that don't have the VOCA grant. Um, and they, uh, honestly, the form is not, all of this that I'm, instructions that I'm giving now is not going to change because based on your the match calculator, your budget summary will provide you all that information. But we'll talk about that more. Why all right, Sandra, I have one more one more question. Doesn't column H already have the 50% included for line 13, just like column K? Okay, let me go to the form. Ask me that question again. Doesn't column H already have the 50% included for line 13, just like column K. Yes, but column H includes the cash match. And remember, you're not getting paid on, on cash, uh, on your match. So if um, if this is really too confusion, com confusing, then just stick with this. Just stick with using this is your cost rate, and then this is your percentage of time. Because this does have your 50% in there, but it doesn't have doesn't take out the match like it does here. So that might be the easiest thing to do, is just for you all to use those figures right there. Um, why would you use the cost base of 15,000 instead of 30,000 in taxes? That was, Mike, that was just for unemployment because the rules of unemployment. Um, Let's see. Any other questions, Jan? Let's see. I uh, know that's it for now. Yeah. Wait. Here's one. To follow up on the question from Mike, the cost base should be 100% of the total project. Yeah. Yeah, I just covered that. Actually, that's not correct. Okay. The sound is going in and out. That may be me on my cell phone. I'm moving it around as I height and, ha and keep it close to my, close to me. Okay, Sandra, there is a question I missed. Why, why would you use the cost base of 15,000 instead of 30,000 in the taxes? Yeah, um, and I was just saying that that, that that only applies to unemployment, not your payroll taxes, but your unemployment taxes. And that's because of the tax rules. The, are the rules for unemployment, which is you don't tax the first fourteen thousand. Although I may not have answered that question. Well, to answer the question, 
you're only going to be paying unemployment tax or payroll on what's in the grant. This is the total salary. We're not looking at that. We're just looking at this. So to answer your question, good question as I'm pondering this, because this is their total salary, which would make this different. Um, that may be a OAIV question. I tell you, if, if I were doing this, I would just get this total number right here and apply the unemployment. Now, remember, unemployment is so, uh, it's, unemployment is not going to break your grant. But let's say here we just did staff. I'm changing this. I can't remember what the total was, but I think the cost base is $3,400. And look, look what we're coming up with. Six dollars and ninety cents. So, um, I I think that any way will will be okay. And this may be something that your office and OAIB might need to look at. But again, when you're developing the the, the budget, when you're looking at unemployment taxes, of course, I think some for some folks it may be a lot larger than that. The percentage is so small, I need to put 100%. That, that'll make a difference. We're still talking $13. I hope that's clear enough. Um, we might have to get some more calls. Now, the other thing, too, is you can always default to however you reported it to OAIV in the past. Now, that's the easiest thing to do. Sandra, there's a couple of questions about un continuing about unemployment insurance on volunteers. Uh, no, we don't pay. They, it, uh, uh, volunteers don't go under payroll taxes or benefits. Was there another question? Look on the chat at the at the two questions. I, I wonder, or, if or Lou Ann, or Lou Ann, if you're on, just if you want to come in and explain what you're asking. That total of thirty five, thirty four thousand five hundred. This is Lou Ann. I'm sorry. That includes okay. that volunteer okay. six thousand, though. Uh, oh, where you were saying that just to use the people. Go back up. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're yeah. right. You're right. So, so um, you can't. So, yeah. see, this is where. Uh oh. Give me feedback. My music cut me one off so I can answer. Okay. I hope everybody um, heard what Luann was saying in this particular sample. When we use this amount, it includes this. So, what you could do is you need to make sure that you adjust. I put 34,000, but it's 31. You need to adjust this and take that out. Now, again, if you go over here, it's already out, and here's your figure. But if you use, and then you can use this figure at 100%. Now, I know for some folks, they're going to, this, they're going to understand this. Maybe for some others, they won't. Um, So when it comes to unemployment, if you only have one or two staff or just a handful of staff, you might want to use them individually and use this as the cost base. If you've got a large, large number of employees, like Luann, your office does, then you just want to come here to this number, adjust this off, and then plug it down here. Okay. okay, Sandra, I have a couple I have a couple more. How do you account for the two thousand tax rate? Is it included in the fifteen thousand total cost of payroll? So that's that's the match. How do you account for the two thousand 
Um, huh. I don't know if I understand. See, when I pull up my chat box, I can't see my whole my whole form. Let's see. Are you? Oh, wait a minute. Where's two thousand? You're talking about the two thousand dollar difference here? No, that's not. I don't. I don't understand your question, um, Jacqueline. Do you want to unmute her and let her uh, and she can ask them, but bouncing her around. Sorry, y'all. Jacqueline, if you want to ask a question. Yes, what I was trying to find out is when you used the 13 instead of the 15 and you didn't account for the $2,000 in kind or, or cash, I should say, you still have to get the tax rate for that because that's still part of the cash match, right? No, because we're not paying on cash. I mean, we're not paying on match. But the match is a uh, part of the total percentage, you know, on the grant with the match of the cash rate. Right, not, right here. This is what this is what the thirteen thousand is all you're going to get paid for. So that's all your tax taxes and unemployment are going to be based on. You come up with this figure two different ways. You either it's either based on the total project, which already has the 50%, which then you have to show 50%, or you mm -hmm. can base it on this, and it it has, uh, and then you would use 100% because you've already applied this. Okay. Okay. Well, what you're saying, if you use this, if you use this calculation, it will work mm -hmm. out. Yes. Yeah, I, yeah, I can see that if you use that calculation. I'm just thinking if you use the other one, you wouldn't account for the $2,000 tax rate at the very end when you calculate your matching. Because if I match on $2,000 cash, I still have to pay the rates for that payroll on the $2,000. Yeah, and it's it's going to be either right here or right there. Okay. All right. Okay. okay, Sandra. Do, do you see the question about please give an example of a budget narr of the budget narrative? Okay, and the directions do address this. So, for example, let's go look at our sample. There you go. So, I'm not going to go over these because we provided that for you in the but in this. Okay. Hope that answers your question. Okay. Was the 2,080 hours work just a number used as an example? Uh, yes, it was. But this is typically what a full-time employee will work. It's pretty standard. The number used for the full-time person versus the part-time. Yeah. A part-time person then Usually is someone, and it depends on um, your own internal uh, policy, but usually a part-time person is someone who works less than 30 hours. And um, But in this situation, I was just showing this person only works, uh, excuse me, 30 hours a week. And in my example, I was only showing them working 20 hours a week. So... I hope that answers that question. Okay. Okay. Now, go back. Okay, French benefits. Again, they want you to line this up like you do, like we have here at the top. I'm just going to copy it and paste it. Now, Sally's not going to probably qualify for any benefits because she works 
part time, but she may. Okay, share the type of benefit. We've got health, vision, life, disability, combination, other. Now you will notice that dental is not on here. That was a mistake. That was something that we noticed yesterday. Um, some agencies will have their bill separately by different vendors on how they um, pay out their benefits. So for this example, let's say this agency is billed for health. The cost base is going to be, do you pay them biweekly or whatever? Standardly, you pay these benefits monthly, right? And let's say the rate is $500. Percentage of time, we've got Mary in the grant at 50%. So there's the total project cost. If we have any, we're going to put it here. Okay. So some, so let's say some agencies are billed for health, life, and dental all together. So we're calling this combination. This only has to do with your with how you're building your office. Um, so the cost base is going to be monthly. Um, the cost rate is going to be a little bit more because it's all lumped together. And let's say that she's she is getting this just, just for demo purposes. So this combination rate is six hundred and fifty dollars at fifty percent of the employee's time and this is the amount we come up with. You have to explain here category, is this a combination of um, the different benefits? Then this is where they this is where they go. Other is for something else that may be provided, like your office may pay for cancer policy or something like that. You would click on other and remember you have to explain that down here. So this was, um, I think this is pretty easy, okay? Any questions before we move on on that? Okay. Oh, I, I was gonna forget this, sorry. So, so let's say for example, that your grant has a new dementia grant, it's vacant, so, when you bring on a new employee, you have to, um, your policies require that they have to wait four months before they're eligible for uh, insurance. So here's a way that you can, where the, the system's flexible, so you can address that because if you hire somebody and it's going to, it might take a month to get them hired, then you've got four months for them to actually um, be eligible for the benefit. There's a way that you can put this in here. If you do monthly, then it's going to give you this amount right here, which we know that's not the amount because they're not eligible for the full 12 months. They're only eligible for, uh, let's say, seven months out of the year. I'm just coming up with that number. Um, so you would put, you know, let's just call this person Susie. Let's just call it health. What you're going to want to do here is do annually. And you're going to have to figure this out. Okay, so our rate is $500 a month. They're only going to be eligible um, with, um, through the grant period for, for five months or seven months. I don't know what that figure is, but I'm just going to make it up, okay? So you put what you think you're going to put in there annually. And this person is in the grant at 50%. And then this is what, what you'll pay for. So I'll, I'll recap. If you have an employee that is not going to be eligible to receive benefits for the full 12 months of the grant period, we're looking at the grant period, then you can, you can um, enter how much they it is going to cost for those benefits but you you use the annual calculation you come up with that amount whatever your rate is for how many months they're going to be eligible in that grant period you enter it here 
Okay, someone had also asked about um, PERS. This is where it goes, and you would put it here, which, you know, dental and retirement both should probably be on here, as most agencies pay for it. So you would select other, what your cost base is, is probably going to be monthly, and then whatever that is, um, they're in there 50%. You, would, you will explain other down here. Okay, are we ready to move on? Okay, so travel um, is divided between in-state and out-of-state. And this gives you a lot of how to do it, so you just have one cost category. So we're going to put in here, we've, we've got the purpose of travel. Um, so this may be, I'm just going to do this, you know, client services. That's the purpose. Whoops, sorry about that. You enter it here. Purpose is for local travel. You go back. Notice that these are the categories, local, in-state conferences, meetings. Sometimes people like to um, keep the meetings separate from local travel. And then other, if there's something you would explain. All of, all of this will be explained in the narrative. So let's say it's local travel throughout your service area. Let's just put service area here. You can just describe your service area and other. It is in your grant, but remember you've got different people looking at the 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 grant application and different people looking at the budget. So you may want to include in your narrative what your service area is. So this is going to be mileage. Now this is one of the problems with the form and we're going to try to get it corrected. So the current mileage rate is 57 and a half cents. And you see what the system's doing? It's actually rounding it up. Um, so we had a long discussion yesterday because we have to send this form off to, to someone to fix this because it's above our knowledge. Um, if you use the current form that's out there in the system, it's going uh, on the website, it's going to do this. And what will happen is the, um, the OAI, OAIV staff will adjust this um, to the right amount. Again, we're just talking like a half a cent, but it does make a difference because you're asking for something that's not even allowable. Anyway, we apologize for that. If you want to take this form and try to start filling it out, um, you can, but anything you put in this form pretty much might have to might have to be um, re-entered, or you might can cut and paste it into the new form. You can do some cut and pasting. So if you're doing mileage, if you look up here, note, if item is, is mileage, leave number of staff blank. Okay, so we're gonna leave that blank. But it does ask here, number of miles. This will be the number of miles that you are projecting your staff will travel throughout the 12 month period. So let's say the staff are going to be traveling about 8,000 miles. Now, if you notice on this, it doesn't ask for a percentage, okay? Like the other ones did, because this travel should only apply to your um, employees that are in the grant. Okay, uh, some people, they have very large travel budget. You know, it may be $12,000, $24,000 they pay a year in mileage. Um, we don't want that. We don't want your full budget. We want to know how many miles you think staff in this grant are going to travel, and it'll give you the right figure. Okay, so Let's say that we've got a little cash match here. I'm just going to put in a thousand. There it goes. It's calculating for you again. Okay. And some of this local travel is in the budget um, information. 
Let's look at conference. This is, you know, whoops, I didn't want to do that. Now, for this, you do have to do um, a little bit of in, um, data entry for each individual, but this is information that you would provide anyway. For example, you have to do an entry for lodging, an entry for meals, but this should, should be um, a lot easier for y'all. So let's say that we know that there's a conference coming up and we're gonna put that in here. Let's say it's the trauma, the trauma conference, okay? We also wanna send staff to another conference because we wanna make sure they get trained, but we real, don't really know where it's gonna be yet or which one because there's several to choose from so you need to indicate to be determined now this is something new with oaib they always had you indicate what it was when where and all of that but they're giving you a little flexibility to go ahead and budget for budget for this because again you know you want to send staff but right now you're not real sure which conference um so even if that's the case, you explain it down here, and you still need to come up with some realistic um, cost. Let's go back up here to this one. So we're going to send we're going to send staff to this conference. There's going to be some mileage. Let's say well, let's say that you've got staff traveling to um, from Jackson to North Mississippi. You're only going to send them in one car. So you got one staff and there and back round trip is going to be 500 miles. Okay. Now see this is where you have this is where you have to enter data. Again, conference. I'm just going to leave that blank for right now. This is lodging. Okay. So this is going to be the, the cost. Let's say lodging is $150. Now let's say it's $100. you have got two staff attending. And they're going to stay two nights. There's your cost. Let's do this again. This time we're going to do meals. Meals are $40 a day. You've got two staff attending, and you're going to have three days of meals. There's your cost. For, um, for some agencies, they, they have um, car rentals. This would go under other. Also, your registration fees go under other. This, this is in the um, budget instructions. In state, in state um, travel, they're not going to pay, you know, um, uh, airfare, conference transportation, things like that. Airport parking, obviously. So you need to make sure you don't necessarily have to reiterate all this computation up here. You have to indicate who's going, why they're going, how it's going to be a benefit, and when, when, where, and the name of the conference, if you know it. Any questions? So just another little um, reminder, when you're doing local travel, you don't put the number of staff. If you do, it's going to come up with something crazy, I think. No. I'll just show you this. So nothing's going to calculate. You see that? Nothing's going to calculate until, and even if you put, you've got four staff 
traveling, you see it's not going to calculate anything, so you have to put the number of miles. Does this count? You can put that there, but it's not. You see this number is the same as that one. Because it, it's not using this to calculate this number here. It's using that plus the number of miles. Okay. Now, out of state travel, the same thing as, as above. Now, you notice we took out local. There's no local travel there, but you've got conferences. Meeting. Sometimes people have to travel out of state to attend a meeting, you know, that's where you can drive, um, and then other. You've got items. You've got mileage, airfare. Now, with airfare, we, we chose that. Let's say airfare is $500. You've got two staff attending, and you want to catch that cost twice, so you have to put two. Oops. Excuse me, you have to put one. Okay, so this is a little different. Airfare, the cost, the number of staff, and so that it, it, it calculates correctly for you, you put one. Let's look at some other expenses. Um, one thing that was left off here was other. And we did identify some other costs, like um, registration is not on here, and um, something else. I can't remember. Oh, uh, I can't remember what it was. We 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 need to correct that for y'all to get other in there, so you can put the registration cost. Sorry about that. That actually was a a, a mistake on our end, and not necessarily something with the form. Any questions about the travel? It's pretty straightforward. Um, the only thing is you do have to go in and, and add a line for each travel expense. Let's see, I think I do see a question. Wow. Yes, Sandra, there are some questions. Okay. Um, so Jennifer is asking about contractual travel. Um, if we have someone from the OA, OAIV staff, they might be able to answer her question. It has to do with contractual employees' expenses being put under travel or under contractual. Is is Christy on the on the phone? Okay, Brandy has asked, where do we enter travel for staff that are not funded under this grant? Um, you don't. If they're not under this grant, then they're not eligible for travel. However, there's an exception with the domestic violence grant. So we, we don't have anybody from OIIV that can answer that can answer um, Jennifer's question. Jennifer, that's um, an o o um, OAIV question, so we're gonna have to ask, uh, we'll have to get back with you on that. Um, we'll have to get back on that question, because I can't, I don't know, I can't answer that for you. Okay, with out-of-state airfare costs, is it for round trip that should be entered? Yes, to answer Rebecca's question. Okay, we're going to move on. Okay, so the next is contractual. We're going to see a little bit of differences in how the type of information we're entering it. Um, now, for contractual, um, you all have in your budget of what all is considered a contractual expense. For purposes of this demo, I'm just going to enter some stuff here. So it's going to ask you first thing for, for purpose. Um, 
we've got limited space. So we've got to be judicious in what we enter here. And I've come up with some examples. Because remember, you're going to explain more in, in more detail about the purpose under here. So the purpose here, I'm going to, going to say is, um, I'm going to say program, well, I'm going to say program operations. And the description is going to be, I don't want to put just utility because I don't want to lump them like that. So I'm going to put um, 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 electricity. I guess that's what I need. So my cost base, most people pay this monthly. So that will be our cost base. However, this is another era. We didn't include monthly in this particular drop down list. So we can put, you can use per unit. Per unit is going to be identified as monthly for, for this. And your power bill is $250 a month. And it's for 12 months, which is the quantity. And there's your, there's your expense. Now here, you need to include your total agency cost. So let's say you have an agency, your facility is pretty, pretty big. You have a $10,000 utility bill. Let's say you have a $12,000 utility bill. You're going to put it here, and this is going to show your agency entire bill. But you only want to show what percentage of this you're asking for the grant. So for this particular example, I'm just going to put 25%. There's the project cost. Now, I have um, a church that pay, they pay uh, $50 a month or something like that. So I'm going to put, I'm just going to put 500 Okay. So I'm not going to give a lot of other examples of contractual, but I did want to point out the cost base until we get the form fixed doesn't have monthly, but you can do per unit, the rate per month, and then how many months. That should be pretty clear. Okay. Now, commodity. So for this particular purpose, I'm going to show shelter operations. And then I'm going to put supplies. Now, some programs um, um, indicate whether it's actual shelter supplies or whether it's office supplies and you probably want to do that here if that's what you're used to keeping up with and sometimes it's easier to track because we do know there's a difference between office supplies and shelter supplies which include like your cleaning supplies things like that um, so your cost base um, base now see here we've got per month so you can use that and let's say that you spend about $250 a month on these type of supplies, and it's for 12 months. And remember, this is your entire budget. So the percentage here is going to be um, whatever you use for this grant. You might even use 100%. Now, I'm going to show you an example of donations here because sometimes people get a lot of um, these type of type of expenses donated. So the part I would put here purpose, shelter, operations. I would put description, I would put donations. I would put per month. Now, I know that you're not going to have a good figure on this, but you, most people have an idea of what 
they may be taking in. So let's just say the rate is $100 is for 12 months. Let's say the percentage is 100%. And you're gonna come over here and put that amount, which is $1,200. So this is how you're gonna show those type of in-kind expenses. Now, a word on this, you have to explain what kind of donations you think you're going to get. You need to put that in the narrative form and kind of justify, how, you know, what this is and how it's used. Another thing with donations, um, you're going to have to, you know, keep those logged in and have a have a value dollar associated with this, so you can justify at the end of the year. Um, that you had that. I think most of you who use that kind of um, um, donations for income match, you really already know that. Um, I, I can't think of another. I'm going to go down here. Okay. So for capital outlay, there's really only. Um, there's capital outlay and then there's capital outlay other than equipment. But here we put capital outlay equipment just so you know what to put equipment cost. This is where they go. There really shouldn't be any other type of expense here. Um, other than okay. I know what, give me. Huh? Okay, so here the purpose is, yeah. I'm just going to put program operations. I'm going to put um, desktop computers. Okay, the cost base is going to be per unit. The rate's going to be $800. And I'm purchasing two. And this is based on um, most people, I think, will buy those computers and stuff and usually put equipment in a grant most of the time at 100%. I think I have this right. So you put it there. In your equipment narrative, you need to say who's going to get these computers. Their, their, the staff position, okay? Another word on equipment is, for some equipment, it's not really um, considered equipment if, it's, if it costs less than $5,000. And if that's the case, then it showed up under supplies. However, the Department of Mental Health won't it reported as equipment, no matter really what it costs, especially computers. In terms of cell phones, I don't really know. This is also where you would put a vehicle. I did forget about that. You would put a vehicle here if the grant allows for it. And then we come over here, and there's our total cost. If we have cash match, then it, it would go there. If, we, if we're using in our computer, some of the cost is cash match. Any questions? Okay, so now I'm going to move on. If you pull up the form on the website, some of the formatting, it, it got lost from us sending it over there to be uploaded and then once it was uploaded so this is going to look kind of funny I think when you go to your um, your form get corrected for you it's not really going to stop you from doing anything but it's going to look really crazy and it might mess you up so basically for the purposes of OAIV you're really going to only see or only be eligible for um, victim financial assistance here and uh, sub sub awards. 
I think we really only have one agency that gets subaward. So here, the purpose would be victim. I'm just just coming up with some of this victim assistance, and then here I might want to put financial. Okay. Now, for those who provide this kind of assistance, I think most of you know what this would be. It would be um, uh, the cost to purchase birth certificate. Um, if you have to buy school, if kids need school uniforms, um, if you provide um, gas vouchers, where um, this is where all of this would go. You can lump it together. What's your cost base? We're going to say per month. Um, you you know that typically this costs about um, two thousand dollars a year. Uh, let's say two hundred dollars a month for twelve years. And then that's your total victim expense. Again, this is based on the total budget. This actually would be higher. Let's make this higher. So we've got $6,000 worth of client victim assistance. But for this grant, we're only asking for 50%. Now, you know, in my, my, my demo, I'm using 50% a lot. Um, but in reality, we know that's not correct. The percentages are all over the place. Okay. Sometimes people donate. Um, let's say cash cards or something to use for that you can in, you can use that as a um a cash match and then there's your total down here this is where you're going to need to explain what all of this what all financial assistance is included here and then also you're probably going to want to break it down like um gas vouchers, $1,000, um, birth certificate, those kind of um, documents that you have to purchase, kind of break that down a little bit. Now for the subgrant awardee, I think again, there's only one agency in the state that gets that. And um, this is where you put your, um, um, I guess you could do something like client services. Of awards, you would probably base that on per month. I don't know what that would look like, but I'm going to put five thousand um, for twelve months. And then, and, um, in this particular case, it's probably going to be a hundred percent. And whatever match that may be used for that. So those, sub, those agencies doing subawards will need to give all of that narrative information here. It's probably going to be pretty lengthy, so you're probably going to need to add. Okay. Also, when you go, I'm going to flip, um, go back up here to the top. You've got add narrative spaces. Remember, you can you can enter as much as you want, but once you get here to the end of the sale and you keep on typing you can't see that information so you can kind of have to add, add another space other costs have been blocked out because that is not um the o aib office does not want anyone to put other costs it all needs to go at the top okay so that's the budget on the second and i'm going to go down go down here and show you what you're seeing at the end of the grant. So you have the um, sales up here that talk about your cash match, your income, the total. The, this is the grant total amount. This is the total project. So when you come down here, it kind of looks at it just a little bit different, but there's your cash, your income. Your total match, that's the grant amount, and then that's your total budget. Okay? Let's look at budget summary real quick. 
And this, if you go here, your total project, your total match. Let me go up so we can see the, the sale. This is your total set, your total match, and then the total project. Mm -hmm. Okay, then again, we come down to the match. You see I'm way off because um, I was just entering data. Um, but at the end, this should, this should match. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go back here. Since this was such a large number, I'm going to put in um, 30,000 cubes here. And let's go look at our budget summary. Whoops, put too much. Of course, you, you're gonna you're not gonna be doing this when you're doing your budget because you're gonna have the real figures, right? So, well, there I'm done, close enough. So there I am, um, 75, 25, and 100 percent. Any questions before I move on to the in kind? Excuse me, the indirect cost. Sandra, there's a question about purchasing equipment for use by employees not funded in the grant. Not allowed. If they're not in the grant, uh, equipment cannot be purchased. And that pretty much is, uh, well, I know for VOCA, that is a hard, hard fact rule. That's just a hard rule. Okay, there's also a question, if you can, if you can look in the chat, that's kind of long to read. So if you would look over it. Okay. This is a bullet under al allowable cost for the VOCA grant. It states that skills training for staff is paid for both VOCA. Oh, you know what? Um, she's talking about the training and expenses related to that. I'm so sorry. I told you wrong. Um, thanks for catching that. Um, VOCA does allow you to send me to um, the, the other staff to training. Sorry about that. Uh, my apologies. Um, in that case, you can you add them to the grant. Now, this is just VOCA. We're not talking about other grants. So that, this is why it's so important when you're filling out these budgets that you know the rules. Um, and you see, I even get confused. There's there's so many rules for different grants. So what you do is you would add that person under um, under um, travel and then you would explain in your budget narrative that this is um this person is non-funded person and how that how this non-funded individual would um their their attending the conference would benefit the overall program now i know i'm correct about equipment okay sorry about that Now, let's look at the indirect cost calculator. I'm not sure how many folks are going, going to use indirect costs. Some agencies have the federally approved rate. So this calculator doesn't, have, doesn't um, address that. So you just put in, and, and these are for the folks that have the federal, the, they, they already have a, um, an indirect cost rate from the federal government. So you come here, you indicate that it's the federally approved, you indicate that um, whatever percentage it is, do something like that. Now you see it didn't calculate, and that was done on purpose. So you're gonna have to calculate your own federal approved rate. Again, agencies that do this I think are familiar with how to apply this. If you do not, then you need to check with OAIV for some guidance on this, okay? Now, now where it gets complicated, you have a federally approved rate and you are interested in using the allowable 10% dominion rate, then you're gonna have to go to the cost calculator. Okay. Now, you'll notice that information is already populated into the form for you. If you're not going to use the indirect cost rate, 
this 10% de minimis, if your agency is not going to use it, then just, then just disregard this form. It's not doing anything to your budget. This is just a, a form to help people to calculate it that are going to use it. I do want to point out down here we are also have information on, on this. You will note that the first thing we tell folks, if you're not all that clear and have a clear understanding of this, that you are um, uh, you are recommended to consult a financial professional that has this type of knowledge to help you through the process. The form, so what happens with the 10% folks who don't use this that are having to listen to it but it may give you information you might decide to use it later um so the federal government comes up with, with what's called a um modified total modified total direct cost so there's a couple of things when you're looking at what your modify be. So this, this tells you what it includes and what it excludes. Now I want to point out what it excludes. It excludes equipment over cap, um, telephone networks, rental costs, travel allowances, and registration fees paid to or on behalf of participants. Okay? Um, there's also some other things, uh, kind of a longer laundry list of what's not included when you're looking at coming up with this rate. Um, we did not include all of those because they simply just don't apply to the grants that OAIV does, so they're not even really included. Now, this is where it also gets confusing. When you're looking at Coming up with what your modified total direct cost is, there are exclusions. However, there's a second part of this. When you do get your 10% dominus rate of amount, you can then turn around and use it for equipment or for cost. I know that's a little confusing, so just to kind of recap, the calculation per, and this is per federal statute, will exclude certain expenses. However, some of those expenses are not excluded of when you come, when you get ready to use the money, how you're going to use it. Now, OAIV is asking agencies that are using this to do give them a statement of how you're going to take that 10% amount and how where you're going to apply that. And usually that has to do with salary um, of folks like your finance people or your executive director, things like that. The other thing about the indirect cost, if you use it on one grant, it the same rules apply for all the grants. For example, if you show your executive director's salary in the VOCA grant, you cannot turn around and use your 10% out of your VAWA grant to pay her salary. You can't put her in the grant. So they're either indirect all the way across the board or they're a paid, a paid position all the way across the board. Okay, so now. One other point of interest is the federal array, the exclusion, how you can use it, calculations, all of that only applies to the federal grant. So what that means, everything we're talking about right now does not apply to the domestic violence state grant. And the reason is it's two. One, it's not federal money. So we don't have to follow the federal regulations. And two, you already have the authority to use the funds for all these different expenses. So what does that mean? It means that if you have an executive director salary, 
that is shown as a um, um, and it, you're going to use it for indirect costs in your federal grant. Well, then you can also put their salary in the state grant. Now, this is only for domestic violence shelters. That's the only state grant that the office administers. So I hope that's clear. If not, let me know. Okay. Now let's go back to the calculator. So now I just went over to you what all is allowable and disallowable. And it's right here. And you notice that nothing is populated because we didn't have any place to pull it from. So you have to go back to your budget And I pull out those costs, okay? So they're in here. They're in here under all of your different budget categories. Okay. So let's say for this grant, and I don't remember what the figures are, so I'm not going. I'm not going to toggle back and forth. But let's say for this grant, we had um, four thousand dollars in there for rent. We had some conference registration fees for a lot of folks. And let's say it's a thousand dollars. You know that's probably way more. We we do have some equipment in there, but guess what? Remember, it's they don't cost five thousand. Those computers don't cost five thousand per unit. If you had a van in there that's going to cost more than five thousand, then you would put that there. Sub award. This um we and we we know for that one grant. I mean for that one example, we put. Something in there. I can't remember what it is. Going to thirty thousand. Um, capital outlay other than equipment. There shouldn't be anything there. And then other. Now the reason we added this other, and that's in case we do run across some of those other unallowable costs. Remember, I said they have a whole laundry list of stuff that doesn't apply to us. Um, if something does happen to apply, we can put it there. So now the system has told us. 10,000, we have to adjust our, our um, calculation rate by reducing $10,000. We've done that for us. Okay. And here it is right here. Here's our total grant minus what's not allowable for the calculation. There is the new base that it's going to figure the 10% on. And here's your and percent. There's some more other little helpful hints and instructions down here at the bottom of this form. This number you then put into your budget year. Budget. And let me go find it. Okay. So um, for this grant, this may mess up or not one. So for this grant, I'm using the 10% Dominion. The rate is ten percent, and uh, I gotta go. Gotta go back over here. What was it? Eight four six eight. Again, note that it's not going to calculate it for me. I actually have to enter it here. So that's how much I can ask and receive for my indirect cost. It has changed that we the total that we were looking at earlier because it's in here and it's in this figure as well. But, but if we go to the budget summary, we'll get kind of a different view so we know what's going on. So this is your federal dollars, and um, that's your total direct cost right here. There's your indirect cost. There's your total budget, your match, and your total grant. Um, you see there, it changed my percentages a little bit. So sometimes you kind of have to work ahead of the ahead of the cart or behind the cart. Um, when I was saying earlier, when this is just not a real linear process, so you'll see that stuff going on right here. That's why this form is not really built to do all of your match and indirect at the front. So you know here 
that based on your indirect cost, you're going to go have to you're going to have to make adjustments to your budget because that needs to be 75 and 25. A little confusing, I know, but there you go. Any questions? Sandra, look, there is a question on there. Okay. Oh, let me go see. Oh, I tell you why this has to. So Jennifer's question is, why did the disallow turn to 5K instead of 30K? Good question. I forgot to mention that. Let me get to it. The um, let's see if it's down here. No. So just to give you a narrative explanation, and this works with subawards and construction contracts only. So what it says is the 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 the, the statute says anything. Uh, it says the first twenty five thousand dollars of a subaward is allowable. Anything over twenty five thousand is not allowable. And so that calculation is built into this form. So that's what's going on. I hope that explained it. Okay. Now, I know that this is a lot of information. Um, you know, we'll be able to help answer questions that we can. The ones that we can't answer, we'll have to divert you back to the um, Office Against Interpersonal Violence for some additional guidance. Um, and the other thing is, I don't know if you might find it helpful to look at the recorded webinar. We do hope form out as soon as possible. Um, unfortunately, we, we just discovered some of this stuff yesterday. And I, ha I will be talking with the vendor that built this form for us this afternoon at 1.30. And it hopefully depending on how long it takes them. If all goes well, we might be able to get this back up, uh, the, the corrected form, maybe by tomorrow afternoon. And I, again, I apologize um, for all of this. With everything being so new and all the changes, I can assure you we have tested and retested and sent it out and looked at. Um, and just like the technology problems, it's to no avail. We still run into problems. The, the other thing about this form is that the Office Against Interpersonal Violence is committed to coming up with a form like this and using the same form next year. Um, if there's any other things that um, come up throughout the year or things that we see that we need to improve or make changes, that will happen. But in terms of the overall um, um, use of the form, they don't plan on making any changes because I know there's been a lot of changes with budget and forms and stuff. Also, as a reminder, this is just your proposed budget. It has nothing to do with your worksheet. All of that, the worksheets are developed from this. Um, we are about to get into the VOCA match waiver stuff. Um, I think I guess that's all I, I needed to really kind of kind of say about that. Uh, now. Um, let me look at what time is it? 11.15. So I'm trying to decide if people want to hang on um, for some additional questions. If you want to, uh, and, and you're not, and you're not going to be asking for a vocal waiver match, then you can um, step away for a, a little bit and come back. And then we'll see if people want to stay on for some more questions. And Jennifer, I saw you had another question, but I'm going to wait and get back to that if that's okay. 
Now, I'm going to go find that form. In just a minute. I guess if there was anything else I wanted to say about this other form is be sure, you know, we, we, we've given you information for the match calculator to that so you know what you're going to be looking at. Um, but again, you've got to have a general idea of what your costs are going to be for the calculator to um, give you that amount for your match. Oh, okay, let's see. Now we're going to match waiver calculation. Y'all ready? So everything in terms of filling out the form, it's all the same that we went through. Everything else on the form here, okay? So first thing you're going to want to do if you're going to be waiving your match is you need to go look later. And we've given you some instructions here. So if you know that you need $100,000, that's the federal dollars that you're going to want, then you need to go ahead and, and plug this in. And you notice on the website, you should be able to click on VOCA. And then if you look down here, it's going to give you, you know, like they all do, your total project cost still has to equal $125,000. Whether or not you have what you're asking a waiver for part of this or not. Well, yeah, yeah. No matter what cost or what amount of the match you're asking to waiver, your project total cost still has to come up to $125,000. Now, it's my understanding that that OAIV will not be allowing or entertaining requests for match waiver at 100%. So I wouldn't plan on that if I were you. I'll I also have a little screenshot right here of how the budget summary from the budget summary on the other form. And let me just go over it and then um, just go over that a little bit for you. So right here you have, that's your dollar amount, that you, that's the federal amount that you know you want. Based on what you prepared in your budget, Your, your total project cost on the budget form is going to show $115,000. But remember, your required project total is $125,000. So where's the difference? The difference is in the required VOCA match. And how much of that are you waiving? $10,000. We've so we've kind of played around with how this logical this would logically be on the form for you to look at it, but um, this is what we came up with. So again, those are your federal dollars. Let's jump down to two. That's what your required total project is going to look like. But when you're filling out your budget form, this is what if you've got any kind of match, ways to match, this is what your project total is going to look like. We know that you have to have $25,000 match. You've come up with the in-kind or um, cash match here, and, you're, and the $10,000 is what you're asking to be waived. Now, another, another um, point on this, if you're asking for a match waiver, then you have to provide a request to the office. And in that request, you know, you have to justify what you're doing on it. You have to, and then you need to give them what amount that is, what percentage that is, because we have to plug it here. And then they're going to go back and double check all this. So whatever you have in your letter needs to match what's on your budget form. 
So the other thing that was provided, this is just to show you, to help you, is that the total match rate here is 20000 What's that made up of? Your cash and in kind, and then your wage amount. And, and let's go look at a sample budget form. So let's go down here. I'm going down here. All of this really is pretty much the same. So our total project is $121,000. Let's flip over to our budget summary and see what that looks like. Oh, oh rat. Oh, sorry, y'all. Okay, I'm back. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I was getting a call in on my cell phone, and I thought I hit in the call, the incoming call, but I hit the current call. Okay. So um, the uh, budget sample form for the HOCA match waiver budget uh, is uh, um, we didn't cut and pasted, and we didn't correct it. So Hopefully, this will help you all with the, the those agencies that are requesting a VOCA match waiver are the only ones that need to complete this a different form, and it's because it gives this information here. Um, all of everything else works the same. If you're asking for a VOCA grant but not asking for a match waiver, you can just use the other form. So. Any um, any questions on this? Sorry, Jennifer, I'm just seeing your notes. So just a, 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 a helpful hint to folks, when you are working on your VOCA grant with the match waiver, you really kind of need to know how, ma how many federal dollars you need, what the required match is, and of that match, how much is being required. Being being requested to be waived, then all of this has to tie back to your your request letter. Again, I hope to get this corrected um, form out to everyone. We will correct those percentages so it won't round it up, and we'll add those other categories, and then fix the uh, formatting, which um, y'all didn't see because I'm I'm in a different form. I'm not on the website form. So on my form, it's fine. Well, that I guess will conclude our session today. We will stay on to see if anybody has any questions. But we'll give folks a couple of minutes to sign off. As a reminder, if you didn't log in with your name and agency name, please do so before logging off.
Rebecca, are you still on the line? Yes, I am. Okay, so I'm going to see if I can answer your question. Sure. So you you already have a federally negotiated rate, right? Is that correct. You okay, so okay, so this indirect. 10% the minius calculator doesn't apply to you. Well, I think, well, the question, and maybe I just kind of missed a part of it, but you said something about $25,000 statute and the indirect cost calculator. I just, I didn't know, is that okay. where 10% indirect yeah. de minimis or is, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yes. So if you already have a federally negotiated rate, just disregard the indirect cost calculator, which I think we need to change that name of that form okay. to 10%. You've already got that. Now, if you go to, um, let me just flip, flip back to that other form. Yeah, can um, you go to the part where you where it showed like the federally approved rate, you know, where we can put it in? And I think, uh huh. Just, I was a little confused about that part because you're saying there's not a, a statute that's applying to $25,000 because obviously that's not that. No, that remember the 10% Dominius um, applies to folks that don't have a federally negotiated rate. Right. And if you choose to use the 10% Dominius in direct cost, there are a lot of rules and calculations that apply. So that 25,000 that I was talking about just applies to folks requesting 10% dominion. Just ignore that. Now that is in that is in the federal statute. There's, you know, if you look at those directions and stuff, there's a lot of reference to the statutes and um, all of that. So if you, but you don't need to look at that because it doesn't apply to you. But in the statute, it tells you how everything is calculated and uh, what's allowable, what's reduced, and that's just one of them. So, but it's okay. in, that's in the statute. That's what you heard. That will you go to the right? Okay. Will, you, will you go to the indirect cost calculator again? Is that where I'm going to click and put in our federal rate that we have that's already been no. approved? No. no. Okay. Where do we put it? It's not going to let you do it. Okay. Oh. So first okay. of all, if if you have a federally approved rate. Or if you're not asking for the 10% indirect cost, disregard the calculator. You don't even need to pull that up. Okay. It's there to help folks who are asking for it. And it's pre-populated information. And your information is going to pre-populate in that, but you don't need to, don't even worry about it. Just disregard it. So I'm back on the page. Here you would put the federally approved rate. Okay, we'll use this grant as an example. Okay, what's your rate? What's your current rate? Do you know? It's like 27%. 20, it's 27. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? So your rate, yeah, oh. I can hear you. Yeah. So your rate is 27%. Right. Okay. So, what you do is you come down here and you look at 27% of this. Well, I got to take this out of here. So 27% of this would be your indirect cost amount, right? Is that what, do you, um, that's kind of, that's really high. It's very high. Cost. I know. It yeah. is. Um, and you know, I don't know if um, OAIV would really look at that, although it is an approved federal rate for you all. But I do know that with that, you might want to talk to someone in your office about the federally approved rate because there's probably stuff in there um, that doesn't apply for you to be asking for a rate that high. Well, I will just say this. We've gone through this for five years and... Um, it is a federally approved rate that's applied to all grants since we have a grants management program at UMC. And so it is You're going to apply nothing, that. It, right. It's nothing I can negotiate or it's not negotiable because the federal government has approved it. Right. Now, some agencies don't always ask for um, the, their full negotiated rate. They'll, they'll reduce it. And, you know, you can do that, but it sounds like your, your administration no. won't, won't let you do that. 
um, and it is federally ne negotiated. So you would, again, once you get your total federal dollars, this right. is what you calculated on, not this, but this, you take okay. that amount and you apply that. I don't, I don't know what that calculation is, but I'm just going to put 30,000, something like okay. that. Okay. And then there's what you're going to get in federal dollars. Got it? Yeah, it did, the total pro project budget number did change. I didn't look at it initially, but it looks like it did change. It did. I'll just go one, okay. two, and, and show you. Okay, and so I'm this sorry. is it's 94 cents. Huh? This I'm is sorry. What, are you having a hard time hearing me? No, Hello? I think I, I can hear you. Okay. So, and you'll notice that this form is where that you have to enter all of this and then again sometimes people will request less than their indirect rate cost so but now you got to figure out what to apply that to and remember it's in the bottom of the grant so when you when you get ready to apply that what are you applying it to you're applying it to this okay and so your total budget without your indirect cost looks like that so perfect up here and you enter that amount like i said i don't know what it is i'm just gonna put thirty thousand. and then um there you go there's your new federal dollar amount and there's your new your new total budget and let's go look at the budget summary here you go there um and, okay. and that's what i was going to ask you also i'm sorry since we do have that federally oh, oh, yeah. approved Okay, since we do have that federally approved indirect rate, were our, will the percentage of our grant, should it still stay 75-25 or will it be this 80-20? Well, no, the bulk of grants are 80-20. Oh, okay, thank you. That's what I was confused yeah. about. I was like, okay, right, okay. Yeah, it, it calculated it for you. Um, Got it. Mm -hmm. So Perfect. you'll know. Thank you so much. That helped a lot. Okay. okay. Um, you are welcome. Let's see if there's any other questions. Um, um, so Jennifer wants to email me a question and I'll tell her yes. It would be 25% of what is outlined in their approval letter. Okay. Okay, so Gloria's communicating with me. Okay, and I'm going to tell. I guess that's all the questions. Well, if so, I guess we'll hang up and let everybody go. Um, so, Jan, before you hang up, I need to type Jennifer a question, an answer. Thanks for attending. Yes, and we'll we'll get information out about the recording posting, um, possibly by tomorrow, but definitely by the first of next week. Okay, Jan, I guess we can shut it down. Okay.